Let's get dirty. Let's get brief. Let's get dirty briefs. Hi, everyone. It's Alex Hooper, and I'm here to tell you about some close calls I've had in my career. Things that I thought were going to move the needle, were going to project me into that next threshold, and then they didn't. When I was in college, I got cast randomly in an MTV pilot. And when I say randomly, I went to a casting office to try to become a mascot for the all-star game in Pittsburgh. I wanted to dress up like a giant baseball. It paid $50 an hour. They didn't cast me in that, but they brought me in two weeks later to audition for this MTV show. I had never auditioned for any television and I was very surprised when I got it. I got cast in the pilot. We went, we filmed it. I thought I would never hear anything again. And then magically they picked it up. The whole idea of this show was that it was going to be the very first intentionally a cr intentional show created only for digital platforms like your phone. That was the idea. And we filmed 17, 20 episodes of this show. I was a lead character. It was two weeks of filming. I had never done anything like that. In fact, I got expelled from Point Park University's de uh, acting department because I took on this show. I was already cast in a play. I wasn't supposed to do anything else. I didn't care. So I left and I filmed this TV show. I was excited. It was a wonderful experience. I learned a lot. That show never came out. It was never released. But because I was expelled from my university at the time... Pittsburgh was having a film boom. They signed a $75 million tax credit. So movies started flooding to Pittsburgh. And one of the ones that got there was Adventureland. Greg Matola, the director, had just done super bad. And I was like, holy crap. If I can get into that movie, that will be huge. And I did. I was cast as one of the park employees. I did the table read and oh my God. I mean, I was surrounded by mega stars. I mean, not, not mega stars then, but now Martin Stewart, Kristen, uh, or, or sorry, Martin Starr, Kristen Stewart, Jesse Eisenberg, Ryan Reynolds, all of these people. I'm a 21 year old kid who just dropped out of college and I'm thinking, wow, this is everything I've ever wanted. I filmed it. And then I got cut out of that movie. So far, I have been a lead on an MTV show that was never released. Now I've been cut out of a movie. But I was able to join the Screen Actors Guild. So I moved to Los Angeles. When I moved here, things were going okay. I started doing stand-up comedy a little bit later. When I was only two years in, I got a call one day while I'm at Universal Studios, my day job, and it was that I had booked a national Super Bowl commercial for Hyundai. I was flipping out. I was so happy. My coworkers were stoked for me. Two hours later, I got another call saying that I had just been cast in a TV show called Hot in Cleveland as the stoner mailman. What? I'm thinking my life is about to skyrocket. This is the coolest thing that has ever happened to me. One day and I get both of these huge jobs, I'm gone, everybody. Now, I didn't quit my job, fortunately, but I went to shoot that show and it was a week on set. Betty White was one of the stars. It was the third season premiere and they brought in Mary Tyler Moore to reunite with Betty White. So I'm working with Mary Tyler Moore, Betty White, Wayne Knight, Newman from Seinfeld, and of course, Wendy Malick, Valerie Bertinelli, and Jane Leaves. Uh, huge, huge. I have no idea what I'm doing with my life. I am 24... I think 20, 25 years old at that point. And I'm thinking, this is it. 
I'm just going to keep on rising through the ranks. They cut me out of that show. Mostly. I'm a sight gag. They cut all of my lines. It was still a great learning experience. It was amazing to get to meet and work with all of those people. I will never, ever forget that experience. But it was still felt like a little kick in the face for that to happen. And this kind of became a theme in my career. I remember I uh, did uh, the first season of Roast Battle on Comedy Central. I was one of LA's top roast battlers. I was doing it a lot. And they brought me in and I had an epic battle. But it was also, uh, you know, a little messy and everything. But still, we thought this is going to be brilliant TV. I remember being at the Standard Hotel with a bunch of friends. We were there just at a day party, and we went into the hotel room to watch the episode of Roast Battle that I was on. This is Comedy Central. This is the first time I've ever been on a network that I have been watching since I was a child. And I'm the stand-up comedian now, and I'm like, holy crap, this is huge. They're showing the introduction to the show. I have one quick line in there and the rest of my battle was cut. That was it. That was all I was going to get. Disappointing to say the least. They did bring me on for season two. I was still the, I was at this point, I was the number one roast battler. So I figured I would get used and I did. And this was a round of 16 to, single elimination. I made it through my first battle. I'm so proud of what I did. Went to my second battle. Again, extremely proud of my performance. I can't help that I didn't get it, that or that I didn't win that battle. I did everything I could. I went honestly a little over the top, probably. I think my performance overshadowed how good my writing is. Sarah Silverman commented how good my writing was, which was an absolute dream come true. But they eventually gave it to the other battler. And when that happened, yes, I was happy to have done this performance and to be on TV, but I literally just watched thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars just go in the moment I realized I'd lost. I kept face, of course. I didn't break character or anything like that. But again, if I had made it to that next round, I knew I was ready. I was envisioning myself winning the whole thing i had plans for all four rounds of what i was going to do and i'm saddened to say that i only got through two now like i said i've had a lot of close calls i've been cut out of a lot of different things i have a new set coming out on comedy central digital Uh, August 9th, and I'm very excited about it. I filmed it as soon as I got back from Japan, and this is my cancer set. This is me taking ownership of these few months that caused me so much strife. Two days after I filmed it, and it went great, I'm excited for you all to see it, August 9th, I got a call from Comedy Central saying, hey, there was a director in the audience. He loved your set. He wants to bring you in for another show. And this show, when they told me about it, I know what this show is. And I was like, oh, I've always wanted to do that. I'm perfect for that show. And it's going to be perfect for me and the audience that I'm trying to cultivate. A week later, I go in and I film it. It went great. They're all laughing. It's a joyful experience. I was very proud of what I brought to the table. A week later, I get an email from Comedy Central saying that Paramount, their parent company, had just fired a bunch of people. They scrapped a bunch of shows, and this show was on the chopping block. (laughs) I laugh to keep from crying. What are you supposed to do? How do you keep going when it feels like every time you you get through that next threshold, you are brought right back down? I'll tell you how. None of these things were in my control. None of them. 
I did everything I could to get myself into those situations. I impressed the people that mattered and they brought me in to film these things. It's not my fault that that MTV show sucked shit. And trust me, I saw it. It sucked shit. I'm nobody should have ever watched it. I did a good job in it. And I've had other people that watched it that were part of that experience. Tell me the same thing. Adventureland. People get cut out of movies all the time. There's hundreds of people in that movies. I can't expect my little part to have to make it in there. Same thing with Hot in Cleveland. It's a 22-minute sitcom. Things are going to get cut. And my lines weren't all that important to the broad story they were trying to tell. Roast Battle? Well... They filmed five battles. They only showed three of them. I wasn't the only one on the chopping block. The next one that I'm not going to say the name of, same thing. I did it. I impressed people. I filmed it. And then the greater powers that be said, well, we want to save a few dollars. Bye. This could feel personal. Sometimes it does. Sometimes I'm like, oh, as soon as they cast Alex Hooper in something, it's going to fail. That's not the attitude that I need to have because I didn't do anything to cause these situations. And sometimes I wonder, how do I keep going? Because what is my other option? To quit and become a coal miner? I don't want to do that. And the environment doesn't want me to do that either. I need to tell myself daily that things are going to work out. People have enjoyed what I do for many, many years. And just because I've been cut out of some things that I thought were major opportunities in my life, doesn't mean I didn't do a good job. AGT, the second time I did it, man, was I stoked. And you know what that was? COVID season. I got to do it, but it didn't have the impact that that first appearance had because there was no audience and stand-up comedy with no audience. Awful. Terrible. Homeless people wandering the street talking to themselves. That's what you're doing. Even my second performance in the season, in the, in the 2020 season, I am extremely proud of what I did there. And it's my least viewed performance on that show because nobody was watching that season. It just wasn't exciting without an audience. All of these talents just went unnoticed. And again, I got myself in the situation. It's very difficult to get on that show, but I did it. I did it. And then, hey, whatever. The people that saw it liked it. I can be happy about that. Howie Mandel, loved it. Simon Cowell, loved it. Sofia Vergara, enjoyed it. But she pretended like she didn't the second time because she needed to. Because somebody had to be a villain against me as I was being a heel for them. Who knows how many things I'll be cut out of in my career. But I'll tell you this. It doesn't matter. All that matters is that I keep on going. And that's the same for you. Terrible things are going to happen. You're going to have exciting opportunities all of the time. And then they're going to just dissipate, fizzle away like a can of flat soda in the back of your refrigerator. What are you going to do? Quit. No, you just figure out a different way. You keep on trying. Life's going to have a lot more disappointments than you'll get wins. That's just the way it works out. But the wins are what keep you going. Every win is worth hundreds of losses. They're not losses, just things you didn't get. But look, we're coming up on that 15-minute mark. So whatever is bothering you today, don't let it. Because something magical is about to happen to you. And even if you get cut out of it, you did the right thing.
to get yourself there. So go do it. Get that job. Hug your friends. God, I love you all so much. Bye. 15.